Two veterans groups are suing the Department of Veterans Affairs for failing to provide racial disparity data and records. The Black Veterans Project and National Veterans Council for Legal Redress are demanding the records under the Freedom of Information Act. The litigation follows a year of efforts by the Black Veterans Project to investigate a long reported history of racially biased benefit obstruction at the Department of Veterans Affairs. So. Joining me now to talk a little bit more on this is Richard Brookshire, who is the co-founder and executive director of the Black Veterans Project. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, let us get right into it. What was the tipping point for, black, for the Black Veterans Project to push this lawsuit forward? Well, we started, um, the premise of our project is really a restitution, restorative justice reparations project. And we wanted to uh, structure an organization that exclusively focused on uh, research, um, litigation, uh, storytelling, um, so that we could push forward a provocative conversation, but a necessary one, uh, looking at the historical ways that the Department of Veteran Affairs have uh, obstructed uh, life-altering benefits uh, for Black uh, veterans specifically. Um, and so that's what was the catalyst, right? We knew that that history existed. Um, and then, you know, anecdotally, uh, yeah. in the Black community, there's always been conversation about the ways in which uh, Black folk were denied care at the VA, um, had received uh, less than uh, what they felt they should receive by way of disability claims. And when we talk about access to VA, um, what we really mean is access to housing, healthcare, education benefits. These things are transformative and they have generational impact, right? So that was the catalyst, um, understanding that there are higher, extremely high rates of black veteran homelessness, unemployment, um, and even though black folk are overrepresented in those that um, go to the VA for care, um, it's because they have nowhere else to go, right? They don't have health insurance, many are unemployed, um, many are homeless. So we wanted to make sure that we were uh, just, not only just scratching the surface, but digging deep uh, around getting data around this issue. Mm -hmm. And you know, the thing about it is that you, you talked about sort of anecdotal knowledge that often when there is, you know, one story here, one story there, those stories can be dismissed. Uh, there can be, you know, there can be sort of excuses made as to why this one individual wound up in the, these circumstances. But when you have the numbers and the data, then you can't argue with that. Um, so mm -hmm. let's talk about the type of records that you're trying to get um, and mm -hmm. why you think having access to this information will help black veterans. Right, well, we know data in the time that we live in is a starting point uh, for being able to prove that there is systemic di discrimination in the processes and procedures uh, that the Department of Veteran Affairs, which is the largest you know, federal agency by far, um, and, and the kind of resources that are funneled into this, a, this agency. And quite literally, there has been billions of dollars worth of benefits siphoned out of the Black community through, uh, through benefit obstruction. And so when we talk about the kinds of data, uh, this more recent FOIA request that we've been working on for a year it's just a starting point. We know, we know, and I will reiterate that we know that the Department of Veteran Affairs has granular data dating back all the way to the Civil War. We've only looked at the last 20 years, but we will be relentless in pursuing this because there are generations of Black veterans and their families that have been denied uh, the benefits that they earn through their sacrifice to this country. And they're, you know, by happenstance, you know, we started this project three years ago, and we've been really diligent about building out uh, a national coalition of Black veterans uh, organizations. So it's not just BVP that's involved in this effort, though we're leading it alongside uh, Yale Law School. Uh, it's just, it's not just anecdotal data. The VA knows and they are slow rolling because the implications would be that black vets mm -hmm. would have the groundwork for class action litigation around this specific um, benefit obstruction that we know to be both systemic and, and in many ways intentional. So the Department of Veterans Affairs has uh, turned over some data. Can you help our viewers understand, you know, A, what does this data reveal? And, you know, any other kind of examples that you are aware of, of, you know, the way this works, the way black veterans are systematically sort of, I'll say, cheated out of what they have earned? 
Yeah. So, um, you know, a more recent study, and it wasn't done by Black veterans, it was actually done by the American Federation of Government uh, Employees National VA Council. And it said and it revealed that three out of every four VA staff had witnessed discrimination um, in the hospitals in which they were serving in. Um, and 65 percent of staff at the VA uh, believe that racism made their jobs harder. So that was just a starting point, right? The kinds of data that we were after, mm -hmm. um, we're really looking at uh, race-based aggregated data. It was the largest uh, race-based query um, around benefit allocation um, that the Dar Department of Veteran Affairs had ever received. Uh, so it's historical in nature. Um, and like we, like I said before, uh, we, we, we are looking almost exclusively right now post 9-11 adjudication uh, but that doesn't mean that just black vets, um, um, uh, uh, black vets of the post 9-11 era are the ones we're looking at. There are quite literally World War II, Vietnam, Korean War vets, um, you know, all the way to the Gulf War who are continuously trying to get the benefits they've earned. Conley Monk, who leads uh, NBCLR, the, uh, the other organization named in this lawsuit, and have been working collaboratively with us um, on this. Uh, Conley Monk, it took 45 years, he had served in Vietnam, to be able to get the uh, benefits that he deserved, right? Um, and so he's but one example. And I think, uh, you know, a more recent um, episode that happened that was very unexpected to me, I was at uh, the VA hospital last Friday, and I just happened to be standing behind an older uh, Black veteran. He, he could have been in his 80s. And he was asking for his medication and he was getting the runaround about um, not being able to get it. And he had heart problems. And within a minute of him asking for this, he collapsed. He collapsed into my arms. Mm. And I had to drag him to a chair, try to, you know, revive the combat medic in me. I served for seven years as a combat medic kicked in. And to me, you know, it was, it was spiritual in some ways. Um, it was, you know, literally me holding uh, the generations of Black vets who've experienced this type of dismissiveness, uh, this this type of discoordination, um, and and he was one that had access to the VA, let alone the quite literally the hundreds of thousands that don't. Um, so I hope that answers your question. But uh, you know that's a, that's yeah. a personal uh, example. And, and suddenly we get dozens of emails uh, every day from black yeah. vets that have been fighting for their benefits. Uh, we got an email yesterday from a woman down in Mississippi who gave a long uh, uh, recount of how she's been fighting uh, to get the kinds of uh, benefits uh, that she knows that she deserves, right? And so for us, data is just a starting point. We launch a, a five-year national black veteran survey next year so that we can start to, to gather our own data um, and really lay a groundwork for uh, reckoning and restitution. And I will repeat, because I think it's one thing that I want to send, a message that I want to send to the leadership of the VA. We know that bureaucrats within the VA have been blocking an effort to address this. And I know we're going to talk um, you know, more squarely about the secretary and his new mandate around starting to address these issues. But just jumping the gun a little bit, um, and administrations mm -hmm. come in and out. So the bureaucrats that run the VA, uh, they're the ones that really, they know mm -hmm. what's happening, they know what has happened, and they have deliberately uh, neglected their responsibility to ensure that all veterans uh, are given a, a, a just uh, screening process um, and that all veterans, including black veterans, uh, more specifically black veterans, um, aren't obstructed uh, by the racist uh, structures that have been put in place uh, to deny them their benefits. Mm -hmm. So then, to that question, to what you suggested, um, how does what does this administration need to do to make sure mm -hmm. that those bureaucrats know that they can't just wait it out uh, until there's a new administration? You know, how do they put pressure on these bureaucrats to cough up this data and do the right thing? Well, I think that's why Black Veterans Project exists. <laughs> we are an external organization that, that in some respects, is antagonistic, um, relentless. Um, I think that the administration isn't going to want to walk itself into a scandal, right? Um, though they appointed uh, people who I believe um, their hearts are in the right place, um, 
what we know it, um, might not, they might not know, right? We have in, in, inside knowledge um, around what's happening at the VA, what has happened at the VA that we've yet to come public with. And so, like I said, these FOIAs are just a, a, a starting point. Um, and this uh, kind of renewed effort to focus on race in any way at the VA is a welcomed one, but it doesn't discuss the generational restitution, the generational impact of benefit obstruction, um, which you know is a loaded term. It's basically saying that black vets who sacrifice their lives to go to war for this country, some by choice, but many not by choice, um, who, who came back to a country that didn't recognize their service and certainly uh, didn't do their due diligence about taking care of those veterans. They cannot be forgotten. Th these veterans are still alive. They're still walking the streets of cities like Baltimore and Detroit, Chicago, um, you know, Atlanta, Washington, D.C., um, Los Angeles. These vets are still here. And so we can't merely say, OK, what are we going to do in the future to make the VA uh, a more equitable place. Um, the entire you know, system of the VA, when the GI Bill was passed in the 1940s, as a compromise to the southern states, uh, made it so that uh, VA, dis uh, VA disability, VA uh, benefits more broadly, were adjudicated in many respects at the state level. Uh, and it was a compromise, knowing that they would be able to institute practices to lock black vets um, out of their benefits. I think one thing that, that, that is forthcoming that I know the administration can throw their weight behind is a bill that's being proposed. It was already uh, somewhat announced in the 116th Congress, but in the 117th Congress, there's a bill called the GI Bill Repair Act, and it would seek to give uh, some of the direct descendants of black World War II veterans access to the GI Bill. So the education benefits of which I've used quite literally really hundreds of thousands of dollars to be able to attain an education after service, and zero VA-backed home loans. We know that uh, generational wealth in this country is built on home ownership, and Black vets for almost 20 years were purposely locked out of those benefits because of redlining, because of you know the discriminatory practices that were uh, allowed before the passage of the Civil Rights Act, but mostly you know continued thereafter. So you know being able to to push. Um, addressing uh, issues like that. And then lastly, there is an effort um, out of, out of, um, out of uh, uh, Congressman Anthony Brown's office and in partnership with Senator Gillibrand to take a look at the military justice system because these issues are interrelated. Uh, bad paper discharges, um, the, the funneling of black folk into the justice system of the military and thereby stripping them again of their, their benefits because they have honorable, uh, uh, um, dishonorable discharges or other than honorable discharges, which again, again, lock them out of the crucial benefits that give them a pathway to the middle class. So uh, that's a comprehensive answer about what, what the administration can do. Um, but Black Veterans Project is the one that's you know really wanting to lead a more provocative conversation. And, and we're going to be unrelenting in the way that we do that. All right, Richard. Well, you said there's information out there that you have not revealed yet. So as soon as your organization is ready, come on back to CBSN. Richard Brookshire, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you.